Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. On this week's episode, we're going to take one of our first episodes, the custom punch-out buildings from Scrapyard Armory, and modify them for my own prototype into a dice tower. What I'd like to focus more on in this episode is how to prepare the file best in Adobe Illustrator. That is to say, turning the lines into the correct order for the laser cutter to best cut through them without the use of the component studio that Scrapyard Armory used uh, at the end of his. So hopefully that'll give you a little bit of insight in how to do so and, and maximize the efficiency of the laser, and it'll hopefully come out in a really great way at the end of the video, if it comes in in time. So let's join in, or jump in, and we can see what we can come up with. So this is what your Illustrator program should look like when you open up the template or something close to it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and toggle on my layer of my laser cut this. So if we zoom in a little bit, we'll see that the paths have the nicks as we went over in Scrapyard Armory's video, as well as uh, JT's video from the Game Crafter itself. Now, because it's a dice tower, I've gone and added these little shelves that when uh, cut out, they should fit, hopefully, into these slots and not disrupt the connection of the tower itself. These are little circles that I've also gone and added nicks to for cutting. And last but certainly not least is the dice tower uh, door for the die to fall out of. Um, this slot here is just for the edge of the building uh, of the tower on the other side. Hopefully everything's lined up correctly and all this good stuff. But what I wanted to really show you is up here, underneath the layer, we have all of these paths, each of those lines that we've gone and created for the laser cut to cut. Uh, I've renamed and put from the first line that I want to be cut at the bottom, going all the way up to the top. So you'll have to imagine that the laser itself is going to start from this top left corner and jump to wherever it is the path starts. Let me see here, if I can hide this path, you'll notice that right, I want to start over here and work its way down clockwise, and then the next path would likely be these little cutouts here so that I'm not going around and crossing over myself multiple times. I'm trying to, again, create the smoothest and most efficient route for the laser to take. So. If we look at path two, we turn on this layer, or turn it off rather, we'll see that yes, we're gonna jump from here, this point here, to this point here, and then hopefully loop all the way around that cut. So it is a bit of a tedious process having to do it manually, but it's just about, I think, the only way that we can really optimize without using that component studio automatic SVG path create tool. Optimizer, I think is the name of it. So we'll make our way around and actually from here, we're gonna jump down to the next path. We can see which paths we're selecting kind of over here on the side uh, with the dots or the squares rather. So we're jumping from number six to number seven and again, kind of for more holistic, I'm gonna zoom out to the whole thing. We're kind of going around this way, boom, 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 back to here, and then we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. We're gonna go around this way. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's select the path itself. Yep, seven, eight, nine, and then are we gonna go up to... No, did you notice that jump here? So we're gonna actually jump from here to 18, for this path, so I think what we're doing is actually translating across to try to hit this path and go around, maybe around this way, finish up, back up to our original, and then go across and then go around, hit this, you know, get these circles and kind of all this different thing. So it's a lot of fun, uh, and by a lot of fun, I mean it can be uh, a little bit of a puzzle, which is sort of a nice challenge in itself. But when you have paths that are, or files, laser cuts, that are more than a hundred 
separate paths, I'm willing to bet that's gonna get a little bit more frustrating. And so not to put in a shameless plug for the Component Studio membership, but really it will help quite a bit in optimizing this. Um, one thing that I noticed when kind of uploading this file is that uh, to the optimizer, that is, some of these still were, uh, would maybe start from this side, uh, from this point here, over to this point, and then work its way over instead of always going clockwise. Um, unfortunately, I don't know myself how to change the direction, except for if you were to draw the path um, manually to pick, right, the starting point, the origin, and then making the finish point. So that's gonna need some experimentation. You just have to kind of uh, hope for the best, unfortunately, if you don't have the optimizer. Or if you do, again, know somebody who has it, contacting them and seeing uh, if they could help you out. Now, again, um, if we're in this layer here, we can expand it using this arrow, and that's how we know everything that's within that layer, uh, what the order is because of how we've programmed it. So next I'm going to show you um, the artwork so we can pull that up for you in just a little bit. So here we are back again and the artwork is aligned um, to fit within our laser cuts basically. Um, you'll see now that yes it's a little bit of a golf theme game so these circles are the golf balls themselves uh, but what I wanted to show again is that kind of these, uh, the dice tower is gonna to be double-sided. If this was the front and this was the back, I've gone and reversed the images. I've, I've gone and flipped them. Uh, so let me see if I can kind of illustrate that now. We're gonna transform, reflect, and reflect vertically to preview it. So I tried to uh, make sure that they were the same distance apart from the edges. Um, which would actually be kind of this inside line here. Making sure that the, well, hopefully, <laughs> it's gonna look like they line up decently well. But when you save the image out uh, for the Game Crafter, you will want to hide the lines, the cuts, so that you have just the artwork. Oh, let's go ahead, there we go. Just the artwork when you export it as a PNG file, uh, otherwise you're print will actually have the cut lines on it, uh, which maybe is a little bit less desirable, depending on your game. So when you save everything out and upload it to the Game Crafter, you'll be prompted with a the face art, uh, the back art, and the cut SVG file. So then if we kind of click into here, oops, so then if we hit the preview button, we'll get to see how everything looks uh, with the lines and everything. We can disable the cut lines to show what the actual right file will look like. And we can also um, disable the color filter to show how the Game Crafter predicts it will come out. After everything's said and done, you can approve and you should be good to go to order up. And I don't think we did too terrible of a job. Now, I did notice that even with just using Illustrator, a couple of the cuts, when I did port them into Component Studio, just to double check the SVGs, um, was maybe not as efficient. And so I'm wondering about how some of that directionality works. So if you don't already have a subscription component studio, I recommend making a friend who does, and that way you can know for certain that you're going to be using the laser to the best of its ability. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for the always upcoming future content. I'm Ben, this has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint, and together, let's build something great.